Okay, I want to uh, welcome you all to a little video I'm doing here today. I'm at the dentist's and this gentleman here is a dentist. He's Dr. Adam Rashke, Perfect. if I'm saying that correctly. And uh, I wanted to show you some stuff. I'm having a crown put in today and I was fascinated when I recently had another crown put in and learned about the technology they're using here. This is, I'm not sure if it's technically a 3D printer, but it's kind of an equivalent to that. Uh, what it does, well, why don't uh, you tell us what it does, Dr. Ratchke? Well, basically, well, it's a CAD CAM system. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a centered piece of porcelain um, that's mounted on a little metal core here, and we're actually gonna mill the tooth that we just designed back in the operatory. So we're going to load up our little porcelain here. We're going to hold it in position as we tighten it down with a little Allen wrench. And uh, we have two diamond encrusted burrs here that are going to basically mill out uh, this crown for Jimmy. And uh, it's perfectly going to fit. So we're going to close the door here now. And Let's start it. One second. I'm going to okay. go hit start. Okay. Incidentally, the uh, I was, the names, they have a couple of these machines here in the office that do this. Uh, one of them, this one is named C-3PO, the other they have named Chewbacca. Uh, just their local office network names. What kind of machine is this? What's the name of the machine in generic terms? It's called CERAC. CERAC. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that exactly stands for, but uh, CERAC. Okay. So what the computer is going to go through a quick minute and a half process to calibrate, to make sure that there's no defects in the block, to make sure that uh, there's that it's mounted correctly, that we put the right size block in, that it can make the tooth. Um, and after that, it's going to start spraying a uh, demineralized water with some really expensive vegetable oil to keep the friction down, mm -hmm. and in about 17 minutes our tooth is going to fall off and be ready for a little polishing and uh, cementation. Okay. So away it goes. Now, how does this differ than the way crowns have been produced up to now? Well, typically what a dentist will do will take a uh, putty material, he'll take an impression of the prep tooth, um, and then he's going to send it out to a laboratory where they're going to go through a process of pouring it up in stone, trimming the stone model fabricating a metal uh, coping that's going to go over the tooth and then layering a porcelain in a powder formation and then going through a process of firing it in a kiln uh, between six and seven times to get the, the right colors and then to get a final polish on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a two-step process. Uh, it takes approximately two weeks. So the nice thing about this machine is that all of a sudden we reduce that down to one hour and a half visit. Um, the patient can stay completely numb during the procedure. Mm -hmm. And you know, and also if we don't like the color or, or we want to change something about it, it's, it's not a process of waiting another week and a half, two weeks to get a crown back. It's a process of remilling in 15 minutes or so. So um, obviously then it's a lot quicker, more convenient and so forth. Are there any advantages to, to this kind of crown versus the traditional kind or are they about the same? I mean, the integrity of the crown should be the same, but you know, I think what's really neat about this is that you know dentists go to school for years and years um, to really work on their hand skills and to work on all this anatomy, um, and and then all of a sudden we don't use it anymore because we just snap an impression and we send it out to a laboratory, and now a laboratory technician who's very capable, but he, all of a sudden he's put in charge of making sure your tooth looks really good. And so it's really nice that this takes back that, that we've learned so much and gives uh, it back in our hands. So the dentist can adjust it more That's right. here. We, yeah. can, we can start making all the natural grooves and we can decide you know, how to match it up with the above bite or below bite. Um, so it, it puts the power back in our control. So, but okay. there's no one to blame anymore. How many, how many dentists use this kind of technology today? You know, I say there's probably, we're probably pushing the upper echelons of 5%. It's a little higher in Europe, um, and that's probably because that's where the technology was developed, you know, 22 years ago, by the way. This isn't something brand new. Mm -hmm. I learned on it in school, um, you know, eight, nine years ago, and, uh, and, and now the, the technology changes with the software where we're really seeing the improvements. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's, it's not a new technology. It's been around for a long time, but uh, the, the level of the, the porcelain technology and then again, the 3D software technology is just incredible. Cool.
Well, why don't we show them how we make the, the tooth in, the, uh, the software part? Sounds wonderful. I can't wait.